freedom. I got a hookworm. Sets its eggs in your skin and burrows Great. through. If you're grossed out by removal of an alien parasite, for instance, and I want it out around here. If you cut it in the beach and then you walk around here barefoot too. Trevor is angry. People overtake for no reason. Get over you dick. The doctor's not here till 10 o'clock. The doctors have told me to go to ACE, which is the new hospital in Tegbalaran. You should be interested. I haven't actually been in Tegbalaran since the beginning of the lockout. lockout. So... That'd be right, I've gone the wrong way. Around the block, maybe. I'm now in ACE Hospital, and the emergency room guard sent me to General Admissions. General Admissions sent me up to the fourth floor. Fourth floor sent me down to General Admissions, and General Admissions are now sent me back to the emergency room. When I got here, they said, go to the fourth floor. So now they're looking into it to me. Hmm. It's a bit of a run around. So the next thing is I need to come back at 2.30, 2.30 p.m., and you will see him cut it out of my foot. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. Let's see what happens now. This will be interesting. I will be using my pass for the first time to get back across the bridge. So, there are reasons why this might be interesting. I won't go through it right now, but this is also quite a lovely bridge. One of the best views coming in the paint now. Check this out. Ah, yes, he's on my side of the road. Why is he on my side of the road? No. Got the mask. I learned though. I have learned. <laughs> well, that's disappointing. No one's checking past right now. No. Oh, well. I feel kind of robbed, to be honest. But that's. Oh, look at this guy. Didn't look. Not looking. Not looking. Not looking. Not looking. Not looking. Alright, so the nurse said that it's going to cost around about six to eight thousand pesos, which is about two hundred dollars Australian. So maybe I'll have something to claim on my medical insurance anyway. One of the things I do find interesting here is there's no real road rage between the locals. It's it's kind of incredible. They'll give a little bit, just like this. Right? Just to let people know that they're there or they're overtaking or when they're turning. No problems. Most of the road rage actually comes from foreigners that live here now. They've got their big cars and they drive kind of crazy. And based and they're the ones that get upset at the Filipino drivers. Very strange. Filipinos have got this wonderful ordered chaos when it comes to driving on the road. What that means is very rarely see Filipinos having accidents. Filipinos. Oh, they do all a lot of crazy things, wrong things, like maybe looking on their phone while they're driving or talking to a camera. Hmm. Anyway, you see a lot of that sort of thing. You see them pull out in front of traffic, you see them do a lot of sort of silly things that we wouldn't normally do, but there's very rarely any accidents. In the doctors, and I'm waiting for the doctor to come through. They've managed to, let me see if I can get this, they've cleaned my foot up and they're ready to go. You can see all his tools ready there. Trevor. You're gone. Gone. Check out my camera setup. This is gold. All these are red. Oh, I've got to do it, don't I? There's no point. <laughs> There's no point being scared about it. 
Asa tadi mau ngomong kok? Ate betul? Ngomong banget Canberra Can I put this? Oh, from Canberra? Yeah I'm from Sydney, so not very far <laughs> Usually these things just burn out or die out in 5 to 7 weeks No really, that long? Yeah okay. But some patients are bothered by the pain So they opt for intervention No, to be honest, it's, I mean, it's not painful, it's just annoying, but I was worried that it could become worse, that's all. How long does it take for a foreigner to get permanent residence status? I'm not really sure. My appointing system though. I'm not a permanent resident. My wife is Australian citizen and Filipino citizen. So if I come with her, I get one year. So I can stay for one year. That's good. And you know, each year we travel on holiday at least once. So that means I go out, I come back with her one more year. That's okay. One more year in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But I have to stay here, I think, continually for three years, and then I can, I don't know. But it's difficult because the rules change. They change all the time. <laughs> Getting the needle. <laughs> Very big needle. This is for my son. Okay, we will start with the proximal or meaning the near field. Okay. Okay, that's all. So, most of it because the area of anesthesia will be bigger now. So, we will inject in the numbed area and then progress far distally. So, more, more needles, but you start where you've already done it. Yes, then you work your way out. Okay. No more pain? No. Okay. See? That's how brave OCs are. Well, I don't know about brave, but I understand that this has to be done, so... <laughs> so you're, uh... What you call that? Uh, coerced hero. Coerced hero? Oh, you are forced by circumstance to become a hero. Yeah, I guess. My son is my son is very brave. He is with his uh, with his hemophilia. I've never seen anyone so brave. Honestly, he's so strong. I will see him with tears in his eyes from pain, and he's just like this. You know, it's very strong. His bleeding is okay now, but he gets bruises, very bad bruises. And the bruises, that's what causes him a lot of pain. And, yeah. uh, and you know, watching him, you know he's in pain. You can see it because he's very quiet and very still, but, you know, it's very tough on him. You will see the eyebrows crossed. That's it. And he's like teeth, you know. Ah, clinching the teeth. Oh, yeah.
So these are worse than the sea urchins? Oh, I think the sea urchin is worse. Than this one? Swaki? Oh yeah, it hurts like fire. But only for 20 minutes. But, you know, the big long one, you know? Oh, that is Toyum. Toyum. It's so... Oh. The but Swaki is the... The small. With the short, yeah. short spines, brown color. Like nails. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. My son loves it. It's, it's very tasty. Yeah. But you have to prepare it well. To well, that they will not get sick. And it's going to be fresh too. It has to be fresh. You know, it can't be. You see these people, they sell it on the beach at Alona and it's been in the bucket for a long time. It's not fresh. Yeah. So. Oh. Okay. We are at the edge of the. I thought that one. But that's the thing, it has to be fresh. If it's yes. not fresh, I had it really fresh, like really straight out of the water. This old man gave it to me. And it was so nice. It's so sweet. Oh, uh, yes. Sweet. Sweet is the word that I describe it and people don't believe me. Because they have not tried it. Yeah. People think it's going to be like uh, very fishy or very seedy. No. But it's very... I said it's like um, like yogurt. A little bit like yogurt, like sweet yogurt now. So, man, you ever seen the, the worm like this? Man, you ever seen like this, the worm? No. So we are all new to this one. Yeah, me too. So you were thinking that your Australian feet will be immune to the hookworm. <laughs> well, it's a funny thing. I, my wife, she's always telling me, wear your slippers, wear your slippers, you know? Now you're going to listen to her. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. 49 years and I never had a hookworm. Come on. I'm told it's very rare, so... <laughs> but you, you said it's very rare. I have been a doctor for a long time. Uh, almost 40 years. And this is new. Okay, if the if the worm will get into the skin, it can lay eggs and grow. According to the literature, the serpent genus lesions will grow sometimes at the rate of one to two centimeters per day. I would say one centimeter. Until I had the medicine three days ago, and it's only growing maybe one centimeter since I had the medicine. So the medicine is working. So the name of the medicine is Pyrantel or Mebindazol? But the, the other nurse was very funny. She was so excited. Oh my God, I've never seen this before. Can I take a photo? <laughs> I'm like, what? Are you sure? She was, uh, she, 100 pesos per picture. I should. <laughs> it's funny, I can't feel it, but my toes still curl because I'm expecting it. Some of the nerves going to your toes will be affected, so...
No more pain. The last one. We're almost around the continent of Australia. <laughs> How fast can you legally drive? In Australia? Yeah. Uh, we have uh, lots of different rules. So, in the main built up areas and the streets around schools, it's 30 to 40 kilometers an hour. And then you have 50 and 60 around sort of uh, housing areas. Um, in the city, it's only 40. Um, but on the freeway, you can drive 110. Max. Yes. In Northern Territory recently, they used to have no maximum. You could drive whatever, however fast you want in Northern Territory. But recently, they brought in rules um, maybe five, six years ago, uh, 130 kilometers an hour maximum, but nobody listens. <laughs> so, it, like in the Autobahn in Germany, before, yes. there were no speed limits. In the north, in Northern Territory, yes. But they, in Germany, the Autobahn, they found out that there were many accidents. Yes. But you see, in Germany, there's more people, bigger population. In Northern Territory, there's not so many people. It's desert, you know, lots and lots of desert, lots of open road, um, lots of straight road, and so nothing really... Longer than the runway of the airport. Yeah, yes. Some of the longest straight roads in the world are in Australia. You know, um, some of the roads that we went on, amazing, just as long as you can see straight. Yeah. 10 kilometers? More. I think the longest in, in Australia is 90 kilometers straight road, but I haven't been on this road. This is in Western Australia. But 90 kilometers of straight. Isn't that amazing? Man, no oh, houses. No. Desert. Just desert. Just desert. Yeah. But there are holes. No holes. No, um, no electricity. In in these areas, no, I don't think so. We went to um, one one place, and the it's called the Bar the Barclay Highway, I think it's called, and there is four hundred kilometers of almost nothing. What if you get into trouble? Yeah. There, there is a cellular service, mobile service. Do you know what? That's very strange. A lot of people ask me that, and. Because uh, you hear all the time of people getting lost in the desert because their car broke down and they got, they got lost. If you wait by the side of the road, people come past. There's, many, there's a lot of traffic in the desert in Australia. A lot more than you would believe. If you wait 15, 20 minutes, there will be a car. Right? It's not like you wait three days and you don't see a car. You'll see a car. We, we had a problem with our car. And uh, two of us stayed on the side of the road while one drove the other car to get parts. And it took him all day. And we sat there maybe eight, ten hours. There were so many cars went past. And people saw us sitting there. They come and stop. Are you guys okay? They were really good, you know. I think people get scared. And they get, they get lost because they panic. So if you get lost, better to stay put. Absolutely. Stay by the car. Find some shade and stay by the car. When you say find some shade, how hot can it get? Really hot. Um, 40? We, no, 50. 5, 50, zero. Yes, yes. Um, when we went to, we went to a place called Kanamala, which is, I think it's on the New South Wales, Queensland border. And that was 51 degrees that day. Wow. Yeah, it's hot. Very hot. It's a, it's a crazy hot because you have a bottle of water in the car, it's too hot to drink. You try and drink the water, it's too hot, you know. 
It's like tea. So you have to put it under the sink. You have to do something, yes. We had a big uh, cooler box full of drinks, full, full of drinks and ice, full, full, full. And we had plenty of water, plenty of drinks, plenty of everything, it was no problem. But see, some people they don't think of this, they don't think of... So when you cross the desert, you have to plan your stops? Yes, because we went to a place called Kumawil, Kumawil, and from Kumawil to a place called Three Ways, it's 460 kilometers, and there are two stops in 460 kilometers. Two stops. One, one, one is a police station, and we got breath tested. We there's a they check your alcohol, so we got breath tested in the middle of the desert, which was interesting. And then there's the Barkley Homestead, and the Barkley Homestead is the only place that's got petrol for about 300 kilometers. So you have to fill up. You have to fill up, and the petrol is very expensive. Because it's, because it's in the middle of nowhere. No competition. Nothing. <laughs> but they have to have the, the petrol brought special because they're in the middle. And they have no electricity. They have to have diesel generators all the time. Wow. It's amazing. But it's beautiful. You know? Why then they use solar when... They do. They do have solar. And, and now, like, I'm talking 10 years ago I did this. So, you know, now we're talking... They're using a lot more solar, a lot of wind generation, so it's a little bit more. At the bottom I can feel it. This one? Yeah, I can feel it there. But no more pain? No. Okay. It's, it's amazing, like the desert out there is, I think, I don't think I have a good wife out there. So it's not really desert, because there are many people there. Well. I wouldn't say many, I would just say that you can... Um, hmm. Can you feel this? No. Okay, the dog's cutting into my foot now. <laughs> Is that in your way? No, oh, it's okay. So yes, like when you... When you consider a desert that there's nothing, yes, this is true, right, there's nothing. But um, I have to be honest, when we went there, um, there was a lot more traffic than I thought. And that was 10 years ago? That was, yeah, 10 years ago. Yeah. So there will be, most probably, many more now? There would be, there would be more to see. Uh, well, because more. of your blood? Yeah, I think there'd be more people tra traveling now because you know, technology has changed in 10 years, um, cars have changed in 10 years, and I think, you know, there's, there's more opportunity to, to travel out there. It's, I highly recommend it. And very sure that there will be no virus in the middle of the desert. Yeah, bloody oath. <laughs> there's nothing. When you go to, for example, when you go to Ayers Rock, Ayers Rock is one of the most remote places I've ever been, and I'm very well travelled. I've been to... Uh, the hottest I've ever been was in uh, Iraq. No, Iran. Iran, sorry. In the south of Iran. Then how do you manage the transition between left and right hand right? Oh, it's fine. You know, it's funny. When I go home to Australia, I have problems. I have to think. When I'm here, it's okay. There's no problem. But when I go back home, sometimes I think, wait. <laughs> really? I'm like, wait. Here, it's okay. Even my wife laughs at me because... Um, uh, more than once, we get in the car, we drive, I'm on the wrong side of the road. What are you doing? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Can you see the worm? No. Maybe these are the... 
eggs. Yeah, the red at the top is where he is, because that's where the infection is, that's where the movement is. But I can see it with my loop. Yeah. What we are doing, we are just unroofing the lesion, so he has nowhere to hide. <laughs> I believe you don't. You know what you're doing. We have to continue your medication to wipe out the infection or the worm? The case. parasites. Yeah. If you give me your email address when, when I leave, I'll send you the link for the video if you want it. Yeah. This is one for the books. My mother, when I told her I had this, I don't want to know. I don't want to see. <laughs> I honestly think it's very interesting. And I, I, I want to see what's happening. I thought she told you that you should wear slippers. Oh, yeah, she said that. For sure. <laughs> Parasites visible. I thought the black line at the top was the parasite. Mm, it's just blood. Really? Okay, all the uncovered, all the hiding places are now uncovered. That's a shame, I was hoping to see the worm. Maybe if there was no medicine. Yeah, you think it's already gone? Yeah. It died. The medicine worked because the progression of the vesicles. Why do you think the infection was still there? The, the reaction of the eggs. Oh, okay. Because there's a foreign body. Hi. Are you coming for a look? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm videoing. Oh, really? Yeah, I want to see. <laughs> nice. I was thinking, how do, how do I video this? How do I watch this? <laughs> what, what, what? And then, because my leg was here, and then I put my leg up and went, come on, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> if there is a problem, there is always almost a solution. <laughs> a solution, yes. Okay, this is the ointment that you have to put every day. Mm -hmm. As often as you shower, because you shower, the ointment will be removed. So you just cut a small piece of gauze. Just enough to cover the. Now you listen to your mom and your wife. <laughs> I'm gonna cut that. Maybe. In. Maybe. Okay. Still maybe. I cut that out of the video. <laughs> yes, I will. You will also edit that? Yes, I will. <laughs> but you know that the favorite phrase to survive a marriage is, Yes, dear. 
that's what I do all the time. That is, <laughs> that's my answer to everything. She's the boss. Yes, dear. There are some anecdotes that say the man is the head of the household. The wife is the neck that turns the head. <laughs> yeah. The only requirement is after you get out of the water, you remove the dressing, or if the dressing falls off in the sea, you change the dressing, replace it, put mm -hmm. the cover with gauze. Cool. The purpose of the gauze is to keep the medicine on the wound, and the plaster is to keep the gauze on the wound. And also to prevent the uh, neighbors and the compatriots of the bookworm <laughs> from going back in. From starting again. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Okay. Well, it's kind of disappointing. I was hoping to actually see the little black worm coming out, but he says that the medicine has worked probably, but it was good to still dig it out because we got the eggs out and and cleaned it up a little bit. Should be okay. Can you, can you see that? That's, that's a pneumatic tube. They still use the system. I haven't seen that for years. It's very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye. Driving in the Philippines. You have to be aware. It's so much easier in a car. Anyway. We haven't had any real cases of COVID on the island, um, but they're still pretty strict about it and we need this path to get on and off the island. Now, interestingly, when I came through before around about 11.40, there was no police here. They were probably on a break and having lunch or doing whatever they do. So apparently COVID takes a break during the lunch break. Very nice bike. I've got a great photo of Jarek and Zeon on that bike. Oh, I'll show it to you. So they're checking, they're checking passes, they're checking people, and sometimes they actually check the temperatures of people as they come through. Uh, the gentleman will talk to me. Probably. Come through, come through. Hello, sir. Come through, thank you. Is it the gun? There's a gun. They're kind of serious about it, aren't they?